Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to go over how to create a um, pie chart, bar chart, and a stacked bar chart. Um, there are other chart types, but just don't really have enough time to cover those. The one kind of confusing thing is that Illustrator calls them graphs instead of charts, but they're basically the same thing. Um, it's called the chart tool. And then we're going to cover how to make a pie chart first. So let's go to new, file new in Illustrator. Set ours up to be five by five, five inches wide, high, uh, CMYK color mode, high 300 ppi raster effects, and push create. So this is our document. Um, and so let's go ahead and just go to the graph tool. It should look like you might see this on top. Um, column graph might be on top, but you click on that, and then we can go down to pie, pie graph tool. Click one time. And then you can set your graph tool to be three by three inches, which is, it'll make a three by three basic um, pie chart not filled in, but it's small enough to fit on that five by five canvas. So we'll push OK. So pie charts are good for um, creating um, visual representation of the percentages of a whole. So all numbers should um, add up to 100%. Um, they're not the same as bar graphs or line graphs because pie charts charts do not show changes over time. So they're one of the more simple graphs, but they are one of the more used graphs too. So so this thing that popped up, um, you know, this is blank. This is a blank pie graph. It's not filled in yet. So let's go ahead and just click in here and select that. And then let's just put in 15% tab, push tab on your keyboard, 25%. The tab helps you to move through the rows. Push tab again. We want to put 20% next tab and then 40 percent so we want to make sure our percentages um, match up to be push return uh 100 in total you can put the same percentage percentages in if, as i did um, so we can put 15 here 25 here 20 and then 40. so i'm actually just clicking in there i push return on the 40 to make it, make it stick but return will push you put you down and tab will put you over in the um, you can also use your, your arrow keys to get around in here too, in the different cells. But let's go ahead and push uh, this little checkbox. That's the apply checkbox. And now we have a pie graph. So that is pretty nifty. Um, so I'm just going to change the look of our pie chart because this is pretty bland. Let's X out of here because we are basically done. If we want to double click on with this selected, with our chart selected, if you double click on the graph tool, you can see options in here. So you can add a drop shadow, you can put the legend across the top, so push OK. So that that's an option. Um, I'm actually going to Command Z that, I don't really like it. But that, you know, if you want to make some changes there, you can by double clicking with this selected on the uh, graph tool. And you can get the graph type options to come up. Um, you can also change your graph type, like maybe I might want to change this to like some other type of graph. I don't know if it would translate very well, honestly, because, but um, in theory. So let's actually grab the white arrow tool, the direct selection, click off here, and let's grab a wedge. Actually, let's grab this wedge here. Okay, so we have that. Let's go to the appearance panel. It looks like a little sun over here. And you can go to Window Appearance, too, to get this to show up if you can't find it over here to the right. It does look like a little sun. We can pop that out. Um, let's take the stroke off of it. So let's click on this and then uh, go to the Apply None there so that it has a strike through the stroke box. Let's go to the Fill Color and select a fill color that we like. We like it with this pink. Okay, with the fill color selected, let's go to Effect which is the top menu, distort and transform, transform. And so we are going to transform this. We're going to enter in the following values. So we want to keep the scale the same, um, but we want to move um, the vertical value to negative one pixel. And the angle should be zero. Um, have these two checked, copies 15. And you can see that it, let double check, then you can see what it actually did to the pie chart. It did create 15 copies that moved it vertically 
0.0139 inches every time it was copied. So push OK. And you'll see what we're, where we're going with this. Um, let's go and click off of that to deselect it in the appearance panel by clicking on this gray part. Let's go to the stack line menu in the appearance panel and do add new fill. That should be on top. And let's go ahead and just change the top color. Um, let's go to um, the top menu again. Effect. Oops, let's make sure. Click on that again and then just try again. Effect, distort, and transform. Transform. And then we'll enter in the values as shown here. Zero, 100. 100 is good, but we want to do negative 15 pixels. Um, zero. Copy zero. I'm not sure if this will actually do much. Okay. So yeah, it made it look like it was raised. It did change it a bit. So that, that worked pretty well um, in creating kind of a 3D looking slice, like maybe this slice is a little more important than the others. So we do want to change the, um, I'm going to take the stroke off and you can just use the white arrow tool to um, change the appearance of different elements in your graph. So I'm actually going to um, go ahead and just change my colors, making sure I'm paying attention to changing the legend along with my color. Um, so I want to make this full color, maybe I'll make it um, this color, so I, I need to change it over here to be the same, right? And I'm going to take off the, the fill, no, the stroke, I mean. Um, but we need to make sure we're using consistent colors so that they're matching up with what we have in our actual graph here. So I want to make sure I'm using the same colors. And you don't have to use preloaded swatches. You can use a custom color scheme um, that you've already probably predetermined with your infographic um, project that you're making. I'm just kind of choosing random ones for this particular, and so can you for this demo. But if you were doing this for your project, oops, I guess this one, um, you would obviously change that up and probably come up with a better color scheme than this. But um, And then we can actually change uh, the values here by just double clicking. They're almost like text boxes. They work pretty well. Um, thin condensed is pretty nice. I'd make them bigger maybe so that they're easier to see. And um, yeah, so din condensed at 18. We could just highlight these and use the eyedropper tool here and just select those. It's kind of hard to make this work very well. Um, let's see, that didn't work. So sometimes you have to just go into each one and triple click or double click and then use the eyedropper. Um, I don't know if that's much faster than just changing them over here. There's maybe a faster way to do that, but if there is, I'm not totally aware of it, honestly. So. You can move these around independently too and space them. Oops. Grab them first with the white arrow, then maybe switch to the black. Oops, I'm still having issues with that. Might have to ungroup as well. You can ungroup. Um, you might have to go to object, ungroup. Um, so, um, so once you ungroup, you might end up messing up your um, graph to where you can't change the values later. So you might want to not do that to the very end. Um, I'm not sure why I'm having trouble moving this one. Okay, maybe it was just where I was clicking. I'm not quite sure, but I'm using the white arrow tool just to kind of make the spacing on this a little better. Make sure my white spaces are kind of lined. Oops, I don't want to change the shape though. So sometimes it will goof up and change the shape of what you're working with if you grab it with the white arrow. It's just, I think if you grab it in the middle, it helps. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. But anyway, that's kind of how you would customize your pie graph. So moving forward, I'm going to go over the bar chart next, um, AKA bar graph or column chart. I think um, Illustrator calls it a column chart. This shows numeric values for different levels of a topic represented visually as bars. Um, Levels of the topic are plotted on one axis and values, so numbers, are plotted on the other axis. Um, each category um, represented is represented by one bar, and the length of the bar corresponds with the value of the bar. Um, bar charts are good for easy comparison of values. 
Uh, and from a bar chart, we can see which groups are highest or most common and how other groups compare against each other. So we can actually go over and just let's get on the black arrow, click, and then edit artboards, and then we can just drag out, click and drag out a new artboard. And on this artboard, I will show you how to make a bar chart.